Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Same here. Thank you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction. Um, I guess kind of generally to the Icons on Earth sort of uh, series, um, which I know like tackles different subjects each time. Um, and then a bit particularly about, about this most recent one about The Simpsons. Uh, my name is Brian Volkweiss. Uh, I'm the founder of the Nacelle Company. I direct and produce documentaries uh, like the toys and movies that made us on Netflix, uh, Behind the Attraction on Disney+, Plus, and why we're here today, uh, Icons on Earth, which in the UK is on Freevee UK or uh, Amazon Freebie. Um, Icons on Earth is hopefully exactly what it sounds like. We take iconic things and we try and explain, we unearth, uh, just to put the name in the sentence, um, we try to show people, hey, you may think Star Wars is huge, you may think Simpsons is huge, but you don't understand why, because you've actually never thought about it. And we've dedicated six months to digging in, interviewing, research, so you can understand, because the Simpsons is interesting, like, because it's so iconic that you could have tons of people that have never seen a single episode. They'll see a picture of Bart Simpson and know who it is. They'll see Marge and know who she is. So, but they don't know why. And that's what our show tries to do. We try to take something extremely obvious that's in your face but you never thought about season three, which just came out yesterday here in the U S is about fast and furious. Like everybody makes fun of those movies. Everybody thinks they're stupid. Nobody admits they like them. You don't make a billion dollars if nobody likes you. So that's Simpsons is getting close to 40 years in perpetual production. That's not an accident. They're doing something right. And not only are they doing something right, when you're making content for that long, I mean, look how much our society has changed in the last two years, the last five years, let alone the last four decades, to be able to still make a hit show that just got renewed again last year for two seasons, like, that's not easy. That's not normal. That's very abnormal. It's unnatural if you compare it to any other TV show that's ever been made. There are TV shows, huge hits that premiered and were canceled within the Simpsons run, Lost on ABC, one of the most successful shows of all time, literally up and down and Simpsons is in production 10 years later. That's what we tried to show people is you may have heard of the Simpsons. You may be the biggest fan in the world of the Simpsons, or you may have never seen an episode. If you watch our series, you'll understand how it became what it is and why, if we're right, but why it is as successful as it is. And, and like you say, <clears throat> it's one of those shows that, that everyone um, will, will have heard of, um, whether you're in the US, whether you're in the UK, whether you're elsewhere in Europe, somewhere else in the world. Um, but where do you start when you take on these topics? Do you kind of go back to your own kind of connection? Like, because I grew up watching The Simpsons. I remember having it on the TV every evening, you know, with my siblings. Um, and probably when I watch it now, I have a completely different perspective on it. And there's jokes that I pick up that I didn't quite catch when, when I was that age and things about American politics that I didn't realize it had been slid in there. So so what's your starting point? What's your way in? Do you, do you think about what the show means to you or do you kind of take, you know, go back and kind of educate yourself on the history that you might not have known about? to begin with it's different with every season like i like i'm in show business because of star wars um but i am a fan of the simpsons but i'm not a crazy fan like i've seen about 100 episodes but as you know with the simpsons that's nothing so but it's more than zero so i like the simpsons i respect the simpsons but I wasn't some crazy fan of The Simpsons the way I was with Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever. So we went into it the way we always go into it. We find the writers and the lawyers. Those are the two people we always start with. And then we find the writers, uh, sorry, the, the experts. 
We find like, who's the guy or the girl who wrote two books, each book 300 pages about the making of The Simpsons. We find people like that. Then we find who was the lawyer at Fox when these deals were done. That's one of our secret sauces. We are always looking for the lawyers. Hopefully they're retired. Um, and because they've been holding in their stories their whole careers. Now they're retired. It was decades ago, and they'll tell you anything, usually. And then especially with The Simpsons, we do this all the time, but especially with The Simpsons, the writers, the writers, the writers. And, you know, going on that journey, what are common, kind of some of the highlights and challenges along the way? I mean, um, in terms of gathering all those people and, and digging into the information and, you know, having to edit that all together, um, what, what were some of the highlights and challenges for you in making it? Well, we had a challenge on this uh, we've never had before. And not only have we never had it before, I mean, I feel like an idiot saying this, and I am an idiot to say this, but it's true. Like, it didn't occur to me how difficult this would be compared to every other show we've done because it's a cartoon. There's no set. Like, usually we can find... Now, a 45-year-old production assistant that worked on Dirty Dancing, like there's a cinematographer, there's a head of wardrobe. So you have all these jobs of the people who were there. But this show was completely different. There was no there, there. Like, what are we going to do? Interview animators from 1992? Like, you know, like, what are they going to tell it? Like, very little, except for the first season and the third season when the animation house changed. So... That was a major challenge. The other major challenge was, you know, the show is obviously still in production. So when you interview people about RoboCop or Star Wars or Star Trek, the motion picture, like you're talking about, yes, they're still making Star Trek. Yes, there's a dirty dancing show in production right now, but none of them are being made by the original people. The Simpsons is still, there were three leaders, one died, and the other two, they were running it in 1989, they're running it in 2023. So there was this continuity of leadership that put us in a position that we've never been in before, where basically a lot of the people that we would want to interview, you know, were like, hey, um, I'm still working there, or I might go back or whatever. So these were, I mean, we dealt with it. Luckily, the show is, the, the, the good news about the show being on for so long is there's hundreds of former writers. So we were able to get the information we needed. We were able to get more information than we needed. But that was definitely one of the challenges. And the rewards were just learning new information about something that not only I didn't know, but like I'm 99% sure some of the biggest diehard Simpsons people didn't even know. And that, that to me, within reason, I've never had that experience happen in such a profound way as we did with the Simpsons. Because no one, the other thing, which is really weird, and I encourage you to tell me I'm wrong, but I've Googled it. I've asked lots of people. There has never been a comprehensive documentary about the Simpsons before. Like that's insane. Like there's a little 20 minute thing here, a 45 minute thing there. And those are usually on YouTube and we're like the Blu-ray season 19 DVD extra, whatever. But we made the first deep dive doc into the Simpsons. And for the life of me, I don't know how or why we were the first. And uh, yeah, just picking up on, on what you said there. I mean, what were some of the standout bits for you? I mean, I love, you know, it's something so fascinating about seeing the original drawings and, and how much they changed into, you know, the final characters that, that we know and love. All those little tidbits about, you know, like the colors and how how they were chosen, um, you know, that they weren't like that to, to begin with. And um, what were maybe some of the things that, that really surprised you that you learned along the way? Oh, I mean, it's a long list. I mean, my favorite thing that I, I mean, a really, really long list, but my favorite thing without a doubt. And by the way, this is really, really common. I Until I started making all these pop culture docs, I didn't understand, but the amount of times a massive, massive success was an afterthought 
because of something else? From Dirty Dancing to RoboCop to Jurassic Park, like almost all of these things, including The Simpsons, especially The Simpsons, have in common was that the people that financed them were more excited about something else than they were about the hit. With The Simpsons, um, James L. Brooks had just directed four feature films for Fox. Of the four, all four were massive financial successes. Three got nominated for an Oscar. Two won the Oscar for Best Picture. So Fox also was not doing very well as a studio. So James L. Brooks was like their big shining success. So they needed to keep him, but they had been negotiating for over a year to get his next four movies. They couldn't come to an agreement. So one day, James L. Brooks is talking to his lawyer and he goes, I got it. I got, I got the solution. Tell Fox that if they green, you know, they have a network now. They're making TV shows now. Tell them that if they green light The Simpsons, I'll do four more movies for them. And his lawyer said, what's The Simpsons? And James L. Brooks was like, it doesn't matter. They'll know. Just tell them. So the lawyer called up Fox and was like, hey, um, good news. We found a solution. Your TV division, all they got to do is green light The Simpsons and we'll close the feature deal. And the Fox lawyer was like, what the hell is The Simpsons? So the fact that nobody wanted, by the way, those four movies that he would do, not one of them was successful. Like one of them was a little successful. No Oscar nominations, three lost money, but it led to the most valuable television franchise of all time. One guy we interviewed told us that, remember I told you we always look for the lawyers or the former lawyers, a significant percentage of what Disney paid to buy Fox was connected to The Simpsons. So here's this massive like company changing franchise that was only greenlit to get something else. That to me, I love that. I love that stuff. And um, I think I'm almost out of time, but you know, uh, that, that thing you mentioned right at the beginning of, um, you know, why are certain things, you know, so iconic, so ubiquitous with the culture, um, like kind of, you know, worldwide really, and, you know, translated in all these languages. What do you think your answer would be for yourself from The Simpsons? Because there's so many factors that go into it, you know, the, is it the irreverence? Is it the time of when it was made? You know, the fact that it does slip in this adult humor, but can also appeal to children. Um, what, what do you think that the secret ingredient is? What I think is, again, it's right in front of your face, but you don't think about it. It's not an accident. This is a five person family that doesn't age. So when I'm 10, I, I completely relate to Bart. When I'm 30, I relate to Homer. Like, I remember when my daughter came home from the hospital, I'm literally sitting there in bed with her, holding her, and she's, she's doing the pacifier like Maggie. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been watching The Simpsons my whole life. I've been seeing Maggie do the thing with her pacifier. I just didn't think it was real. And then I'm holding my daughter and it's the exact same noise that I've been listening to on The Simpsons my whole life. So like my wife probably could have related to Lisa when she was in school and now relates to Marge. So the easy answer to your question is family, 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 family. It's what made uh, Fast and Furious work to a certain degree. It's what makes Marvel work. It like family, we can all relate to it. There's not a sing an orphan can relate to a story about a family, obviously differently from someone who was not an orphan. But my point is, no one alive can't relate to a family. And the other thing is, and I'm just speaking for myself, but like what I love about The Simpsons is all of us every day, at least at one point, feel like an idiot. We say something stupid, we do something stupid, but also the people around us are saying and doing stupid stuff. So like, you know, I was at Subway. Um, I don't know if you guys have Subways, the sandwich shop. I was at a sandwich shop over the weekend 
And I told the guy, no pickles. He put 10,000 extra pickles. So when you watch The Simpsons, everything is so crazy that it just kind of makes you be like, you know what? It's not just me. It's it's a, obviously it's a cartoon. It's a cartoon version of reality that makes you not feel as much as an idiot for, you know, do it, you know, like there's a door to my bathroom in my house. I've lived in this house for years, constantly walking into it. So it just makes me feel good sitting there, laying back and watching these five family members have as crazy a life as I do, but in a cartoon, cartoonized way. That's what I think it is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think I'm out of time, but thank you so much for sharing all that with us. I um, can't thank wait for everyone else to get stuck into the show and um, best of luck with you. Yeah, I can't wait to also see the one about Fast and the Furious because that sounds fascinating too.